just finished watching the framework by Figma event. This time around, they announced quite some interesting features. One of them being Code Connect. And what this does actually allows you to have your code snippets directly into the dev mode where uh, front end developers like myself can just copy that and integrate into to your uh, project. How you can do that is actually by the package that they have uh, published with this uh, open source actually repository. Quite uh, pleasantly surprised. And how you do that is basically just install this into your project and then it's uh, good to go. And of course you have to configure a few stuff and have your uh, token, but uh, that's the basics. And I'm going to show you how to do that on a React project. Uh, the Code Connect is available on the organization plan, is not available on the professional plan. So just be aware if you don't see these features. At SCB, where I work uh, on the green design system, uh, we actually get the inline SVG uh, representation of the components directly from the API on build process while uh, we use the content layer set up with Next.js. And what that does for us actually keep in sync always the latest version of the component. But where one part lacks is actually having the code snippets ready directly on Figma even though we have a very specific plugin to update the variables. And actually for us, the source of truth for variables is our repository. And then we sync via the plugin in, in Figma the variables. But it's quite nice to know now that we can do the typography variables as well and together with the gradients and pretty much have everything in one place. But just to walk you through that, in the past you would maybe go into dev mode and of course you see all these properties and everything, but you don't see the actual code snippet uh, for, for the single component that you want to include. And now, if you use Code Connect, you will see it like this. For example, the import path, and actually this can be a real path. Yeah, I'll show you how you can do it on the configuration file. And then the component, I did it in purpose, uh, just simple without any props as of now. As you can see, we have quite a lot of props for the component, but uh, we're gonna add just uh, one example to see how that works. Okay, so if we switch to code, uh, the very first thing you want to do is to actually uh, set a environmental variable called Figma access token and you can see that also on the specifications you can do on the command but I, I would prefer it like this you get that on your account and you have to give it uh, right access so it can update also the meta uh, stuff on your file uh, to showcase those uh, code snippets on the dev mode and one other thing you want to configure is uh, this file called figma.config.json it has to be on the root of your project and then you want to specify the paths that you want to include. In our case, we're using React, so you can uh, specify the import paths uh, how you want them to be, basically when they are set up. Uh, it might not exactly work uh, as it should right now because we're just doing it right after the event. But uh, let's go, for example, see in here, we just did a very simple example. Let's remove this uh, secondary label because we won't need this and say that we have a very simple component with a single label. And then what you want to do is actually open in the integrated terminal this exact path because once we do the yarn figma and then connect uh, command, this will create a new file. Uh, it will get the name from the component itself. Uh, in this case, we have button and that will be the name of the file. And you want to go to copy and paste and then copy link to selection. Once you do that, it gets actually the link to that node in there. Uh, you can see actually the by the ID as well on top here. And we actually do the exact same thing on uh, green design system where we get uh, each node as inline SVG. And this for us will work fantastically because once we connect all these things, it will work seamlessly and just that common language between design and code will be uh, super perfect and I'm really happy about that. And to just go back to what we were doing in the button component, we do yarn figma connect and then create because we want to create a new component and then paste that link like this. It probably will change in the future and I can imagine customizing this with some other environmental variables, like for example, to, to get the file and stuff like that. Once we do that, it will create a new file. As you can see, it's fetching it. 
Now on the left side here you see button.figma.tsx. What is amazing is that it's actually getting all the properties from, from the component directly from Figma and even their type. Like you can see Figma string for the uh, labels and then Boolean for if you want to show the icon to the right or icon to the left and uh, sort of, or, or for that matter, all the other properties. And you can imagine how you can customize this and pretty much have all the features in here that you want, like variants or colors or uh, types and all that sort of stuff. And now how we actually get those, if we do props.primary label, we can see that if we look at the primary label, we have the, the string primary label in here. What that will do now, once we do the next command, if you go into dev mode and we inspect this, we can see that the button is like this, no props at all, and uh, the import path. Once we hit the command uh, yarn, figma, connect, and then publish, this is going to get these changes that we already did and publish them into the file. So it's done. Now when we go back to the Figma, you can see immediately it has updated that and it actually gets the string from in here, primary and so on which actually is amazing. And this is a super, super simple example, but you can imagine on where it can go from here. And of course, if you're using Storybook and stuff like that, you can set them up. As of now, I think it's available for React and Angular. And they said that it's going to be, uh, or actually Swift UI, and it's going to be available on other frameworks as well in the future. Now let's just set up a very simple uh, typography variables set up say here button label and then maybe auto layout just so we make a bit clear and how that exactly is working or actually we can combine these two now and instead of getting the color here we get it as a, a variable this one too you can see color purple color teal all of these settings are coming from our preset uh, variables which we have font family it should and have to be string font size as a number font weight can be either string or number uh, in our case is a uh, number and then you can select your uh, text and instead of having enter here or this fancy font we can choose the variable font family and then the weight uh, is down here apply variable font weight 700 you can see that is uppercase now or sorry bold for that matter and then the font size we do that here font size you can see that is actually super large and you want some more padding yes now you can see that we actually have the gradient or for that matter you can save this uh, gradient a new gradient and you can see that we have as a style where the amazing part happens is if we update these variables with any other color you can see that all these things just work amazingly so in a nutshell ladies and gentlemen these were the features announced on the framework event super excited to see where this goes and the only caveat to this and that i hope that it will change to actually have the code connect available on the professional plan or at least on started to test things out and see how they work because I think it's uh, quite a nice feature and a lot of people will be missing out and I hope uh, this will change in the future. Otherwise, see you into the next one. Peace.